Today, we are gonna make some grass. No, I'm not in Colorado, so it's not gonna be that kind of grass. It's our techniques that are so simple and sensible, your mowers will practically build Stir themselves. <laughs> Hello folks, it's Mad Dog Murph. Welcome to today's show. Today, well, we're going to go into a, <laughs> into a fantasy world. Woohoo! <laughs> but not too far into the fantasy world. So, as everybody knows, I like playing World of Tanks and I like building the tanks that I play with in World of Tanks. You're welcome. I know, that joke never gets old with me, but... Anyway, I digress. I have been wanting to build for some time the uh, T28 slash T95 that had the 155 millimeter gun. Now, the real T28, there was two of them built. They were designed, and we'll talk about this a little bit more in the in the in the video as it progresses. But they were originally designed to go over to Europe and fight against the uh, the Siegfried line. However, by the time they were developed, um, we were already past that point, and so they continued trials and testing on them, thinking that they might be needed in the Pacific, which they would have been had we uh, invaded the Japanese home islands. Well, <clears throat> originally there was going to be six of them built. They wound up building two of them, testing them out. One of them had an engine fire at some point and was destroyed. The other one is now in a wonderful museum back east and it's been restored. It looks beautiful inside and out. So it had a 105 millimeter um, gun. And I'll go into that again in, in the video here in a few minutes. But in the game world of tanks, you can upgrade it as far as a 155 millimeter gun, which is just outstanding. Um, the model kit, the model kit, the model kit is this one here from Dragon, and it was a very limited release, uh, the T95 Super Heavy Tank, the, and we've discussed this before when I went ahead and did the, um, did the unboxing of this kit not too long ago, that the only real difference in this kit and the other kit is this 155 millimeter gun. So that's what I want to build. Um, I've already done a T28 with the 105 millimeter and I've put a camouflage scheme on it and it's really cool. We'll look at that one. But I really wanted something that was more along the lines of the T28 that's in World of Tanks. And again, we'll look at that here in just a moment. So stick with Mad Dog Merv. We're gonna go through a couple of techniques I use to get this tank where I want it. And we're gonna look at the build of the T28 slash M28, because I'm going to build it as a production model M28 tank. So the American T28 tank was originally designed to breach the Siegfried line. I got this picture from a IPMS Nationals, where somebody had built the, uh, the tiger's teeth there on the Siegfried line, and the T28 was supposed to be the tank that would uh, be a, a bunker buster, if you will. And it was designed with the 105 millimeter T5 E1 uh, main gun. So that was kind of built around this 90 ton heavy tank. Well, you can see I have built this tank before, painted it up in a camouflage of my own making, and I have this in my collection. There were two prototype tanks built, and one of them actually suffered from an engine fire and was eventually destroyed. The other one served for many years as a load tester and it went through all of its um, intended uh, testing and was just found to be way too heavy at 90 tons to really be effective and it was too slow and underpowered because it had the same engine as the uh, Pershing. Well, there was originally supposed to be six of these built. Okay, well, the end of the war, and we didn't need it anymore, so it was just done for, and the one went through trials. Anyway, what I decided I wanted to do is I wanted to build kind of a fantasy version of this um, 
for what if we had gone on to Japan and we would have needed it in Operation Olympic. So I decided to go ahead and build mine as such. A few years ago, Dragon came out with the T95 Super Heavy Tank Kit, which the main difference between this and the T28 kit was this 155 millimeter gun. And I said, oh yeah, baby, I have got to have that. So in World of Tanks, here's what the current T28 looks like. It's missing the two outboard um, tracks, and those weigh 15 tons apiece. So if you get rid of both of those, instead of a 90-ton tank, you got a 60-ton tank. Anyway, this is what the T28 looks like in World of Tanks. Now the T95 looks just like the T25 that I built, or the T95 that I built. So I thought, well... This is kind of the direction I want to go, but I don't want to do this exact thing. So I'm going to modify mine just a little bit. I want the 155 millimeter gun. So if you're going to bust bunkers, particularly um, when you're fighting the mainland of Japan, I want the 155 millimeter gun. And I'm going to make a few other changes because, well, it's my model and I can do that. So now armed with this uh, direction and this kit, we are going to get started. This is a map of where the uh, landings would have taken place on the uh, main island in Japan to try to take uh, Tokyo. And you can see these big flat areas. The Kanto Plain is where they probably would have mo put most of the armor moving up towards Tokyo. So with that in mind, we're going to build this as the 60-ton version minus the two uh, outboards and with the 155 gun. Again, the kit goes together very nice. It has this horizontal volute suspension system, very similar to the ones in the EZ-8, but there's a few less parts, um, and it goes together pretty well. One thing I wanted to do was add a little bit of accuracy to mine. There's some loops, um, metal loops that go back in the, uh, the gas tank area that I've added, and you can see the 155 millimeter gun that I've added and putting it together here so far it it goes together quick and easy so I'm not going to do any pre-shading on mine we're just going to go ahead and load the uh, airbrush up with XF62 uh, spray the whole thing and wait for it to dry before we move on to the other colors of the camo we want to do all right so we are dry and we are going to try to paint next um, the brown color that goes on the camouflage and I'm using linoleum deck brown from Tamiya so let's uh, get going on this we're gonna use XF 60 for the uh, dar the dark yellow for the kind of tannish color that's in this camo job and we're also just gonna use some Floquil railroad uh, it's like engine black um, for the black that uh, we're gonna spray and here you can see just a quick little pattern very similar to what is on the instructions and what's on the box uh, the tan turned out okay I did have to go back and respray each one of these colors just a little bit a little bit finer because uh, I did get a little over spray in areas I didn't want but all in all I was very pleased with how this color combo looked on this particular tank now again I want to do a production version as if they had taken one of uh, the other four that they didn't actually build, they actually built them with the 155, put them into combat um, in Japan. And so I'm going to put some logs on the side like they did with, with Fury. And so I took these logs that I had from um, Legend, I believe, and I just extended them out using some Milliput. And, well, you can see the results here, how they look. Once I had them primed with Mr. Surfser, it was off to work on tracks. Okay, so here are the tracks. Here are the teeth for the tracks. And all we need to do is take the clippers and clip off each individual one, which I've got some ready to go here. And we're gonna take our Tamiya Ultra Thin Cement, put a little bit there, grab a tooth, and put it into place. 
Now we got to repeat that entire length of this track. And then we have three more of those to go after this. So I'll get started on this. We'll see you in about eight hours. Now I'm going to save the track portion for a completely different video. We're going to talk about how I paint DS tracks. But just so you know, um, I painted them and gave them a wash and all that kind of fun stuff and put them on. And here they are on the model along with the, um, the sticks. Once I painted those up in just some uh, greens and grays. Uh, they actually turned out pretty good. Now, at first I tried using some chain, miniature chain, to anchor them, and it just didn't look right. So here I've used some fine twine and anchored them on there, and I think this will work. I like the way this looks. Put a recognition panel on there and a few other things. And here we are, the final result. I went ahead, uh, I put a driver in there, and I just didn't like how he looked. And I thought, you know, I'm going to use the crew from Fury. Remember a year ago, I built this uh, this group and painted them up. Well, I already have a Fury. I already have figures. So what the heck? I thought, we'll put these guys on here. Uh, you can see I put a few of their accoutrements with them. And the only real um, uh, weathering I did was some mud effects that uh, I just took some pigment and some alcohol and kind of put some mud where they would get up on the tank and get up on top of the tank and whatnot. I don't expect this to be a quagmire, but you know it does get dirty and it does get a little muddy, so you're going to see that effect on here. Uh, the slightly rusty uh, spare tracks, the dry brushing technique that I use on the edges and corners to make things pop, and the wash, the black wash that I give um, all of the panel lines and such. So they're very subtle, these effects, but you will notice. Them. Here's a really good shot of that butt effect where the uh, crew getting up on the uh, on the top of the tank. So all in all, I'm very happy with the results. Um, the the mud effects, not, not overdone. Eventually I'm going to put it into a um, diorama. I'll do some groundwork and we'll add more uh, ground effects as appropriate to the suspension at that time. So Hopefully you guys like how this turned out. Again, this would be like May of 1946 uh, during Operation Olympic. So you can see how the crew turned out. I just I like the overall look of this particular tank this way. Now one thing I decided to do, I needed one more thing. I needed another element, and there you go. I had this German Shepherd, this resin German Shepherd I'd gotten from England, decided to paint him up, and uh, there, they've got a dog on the tank with them. I just thought it would be fun to do. And you'll notice the uh, submachine gun, which is kind of a signature trademark I do with all my tanks. I put some kind of weapon up on top. Well, thanks for joining us, folks. I hope you liked this today.